Infinite power producing cells in survival, infinite water tanks that fill up 10 times faster, wings that can make you fly, and fractioning towers which can process the crude oil derivatives without using a chemical plant. These are just few of the many HBM subtests that we are going to discuss in this video that will make your survival experience a whole lot better. So this video has timestamps in the description and also there are links that can help you out. So without any further ado guys, let's get straight into it. The first updates that we are going to be taking a look at come in the form of fluid storage tanks. So we have the biggest tank and the heavy magnetic storage tank. Now the biggest tank lives up to its name. It has a storage capacity of 2048 buckets of fluid. And the heavy magnetic storage tank, well it has a capacity of 512 buckets. Now in order to put these things into perspective, this was the biggest tank that we had for the longest time in HBM mod, and it had a capacity of 256 buckets. In comparison to that, the biggest tank is 8 times bigger and the heavy magnetic tank is twice as big. Now coming to the biggest tank, as you can see, it has two ports on all its side for intake and outtake of fluid. So it has a total of 8 fluid ports and then there is the system where you can set the fluid type using a fluid identifier now there are windows on all four sides or you can say there are glass panes on all four sides and they are actually pretty useful as you can see the level of water is rising up in the tank and you can actually see it rise up so take a look here as the water goes up in the tank it actually shows in this glass pane right here so that is a pretty good feature in the biggest tank. You can actually see the amount of fluid it has in it directly by seeing through the glass panes. So these are not only for show, they are actually pretty functional. And that is a really good thing. So yeah, that was it for the biggest tank. And in order to craft the biggest tank, you need 16 steel plates, 16 titanium ingots, 16 steel scaffolds, and finally 16 oil tar. And that will give you one biggest tank. That is a pretty good deal in my opinion, considering how much amount of fluid this can hold. Now coming to the heavy magnetic storage tank. And this storage tank uses magnetic fields in order to hold the fluid without it touching any side of the container. So as you can see, I have placed water in this tank and the water is being held in middle of the tank via magnetic field. The water can't go anywhere. The water can not touch the sides of the container. And that is the best part about this container. And that's precisely why it can store fluids like antimatter and anti -shirbidium. As you already know, you can store these fluids in normal fluid storage tanks, right? So now we have the heavy antimatter storage tanks in order to store antimatter, anti -shirbidium, and dangerous fluids like that. And also, like the biggest tank, this fluid container will also show the amount of fluid it has inside it by seeing the size of the sphere. So as you can see, I have placed an entire stack or rather half a stack of antimatter. So the sphere is full size. Now when I place only 16 barrels there, the sphere is only half the size. And as I place more there, the sphere will grow. So yeah, in order to craft this, you need 12 steel ingots, titanium ingots, satanite plates, superconducting coils, and finally self-charging polonium battery, which will come to soon. So now that we have seen the fluid storage, let's see something that will solve your a lot of reactor problems, which is the heavy infinite water tank. So as you guys know, the normal infinite water tank was used to obtain infinite amounts of water in survival mode, and it replaced pumps basically. But the rate at which it filled up the water, yeah, that was not so impressive. So now what we have instead is the heavy infinite water tank. And the heavy infinite water tank is crafted using four infinite water tanks, four universal fluid ducts, and one steel tank. And this guy, or rather this infinite water tank, is several times faster. Like, see this. Just take a look at this rate of water fill. It's actually crazy. So yeah, this is like, I don't know, 9-10 times faster than the normal infinite water tank and this guy can actually take care of most of your reactor problems so now if you build a 4x4 rpm care reactor you can easily run it using only a single heavy infinite water supply now that we have seen infinite water supply let's also take a look at infinite power supply so we have the self-charging batteries now uranium, titanium, 
plutonium, then there is the polonium, then there is gold, and finally there is the americium. So these are the six types of self-charging batteries all with different rates of charging. So in order to craft any of this, the very first thing that you need to craft is the self-charging uranium battery which is crafted using four gold nuggets, two uranium-238 billets, two lead plates and one thermoelectric element. Now once you have crafted this, all the other batteries can be crafted in a successive progression. So here you can see the crafting recipe for the tectinium battery. Then after crafting the tectinium battery, you can craft the plutonium battery which is in a similar formation but yeah some things will just change then on top of plutonium you can craft the polonium battery once you have the polonium battery there comes the gold battery and finally with the gold crafted you can craft the americium battery there so all of these batteries have different rates of charging which you can check by placing them in a battery block so yeah that is the only way that you can use these batteries by placing them in a battery block and then extending a cable out of it so yeah and each one of them will charge up in a different rate with a different rate that is and you can see that rate written down with uranium being the lowest and americium being the highest so this is pretty handy for survival once you at least get your hands on uranium, power generation will become a bit simpler. This was one thing that was lacking from HBM's mod, but now looks like we are getting some form of renewable energy. So now once we have that, let's take a look at the fractioning tower, which can be crafted using six steel plates, two big steel shells and one steel grid. Now the fractioning tower is a pretty interesting and pretty useful thing as it can perform all the final recipes of the chemical plant which used to come out of hot crude so when we process hot crude oil it produces four things right now as you can see i have pressed the fractioning tower and right now it says that it can process heavy oil so the fractioning tower basically what it does is it takes no power whatsoever and it will do all the work that the chemical plant used to do in the past so for example if i set up a simple setup here which is the for the heavy oil and I start pumping heavy oil inside this fractioning tower you will see that it will start separating its components so the heavy oil is being transferred into the fractioning tower and we are getting bitumen and industrial oil so that is a pretty useful thing as we don't have to spend our power in the chemical plant now it can also process the other recipes and in order to do that what you need to do is you need to take the fluid identifier so here if i take the light oil fluid identifier and i click on it there this fractioning tower will now process light oil and it will instead give us diesel and kerosene from the light oil now i am gonna make a detailed video on the fractioning tower so i'm not gonna cover much of this in this video but yeah this was the basic of the fractioning tower now let's come to something which is really interesting which are the anvils so there are a total of 10 types of anvils which have been added and these anvils are really useful so there is the iron lead steel meteorite star metal ferronium bismuth then there is the ferric sherbidate dineutronium and finally the murky end so a total of 10 types of anvil now in order to craft any anvil the first thing you need to do is either craft steel or sorry iron or the lead anvil as you can see all of these anvils have different tiers but yeah in order to get to the different tiers you need to craft the tier 1 anvil which is the iron anvil or the lead anvil now let's quickly take a look on how to use these anvils first and then we'll go to the crafting so this is the basic gui of the anvil it can be used as a normal vanilla anvil but the main use comes in like this now as you can see the tier 1 anvil can process all these different things that you can see here and once you click on any item it will show you the input and the output so let's say that i want to craft this golden ring coil right so what are the inputs that i need uh, well i need two gold rings so let me get that real quick and i need two gold coils right so one and two so now if i have these two gold coils in my inventory that's it you need to keep them in your inventory click on it and then click on this anvil icon and there it will craft the ring for us now the good thing about this is that these 
end wheels have no durability so they will work for an indefinite amount of time so that's pretty good and as you keep on increasing the tiers the amount of things that these end wheels can craft will keep on increasing and increasing so yeah many recipes of hbm spot now depend on these end wheels so these end wheels are pretty useful and they are also pretty important so in order to craft the iron end wheel you need six ingots and one block of iron same goes for the lead end wheel now in order to craft the steel end wheel what you need to do is take a normal end wheel and process it with 10 steel ingots so let me get some steel ingots so that i can give you guys an example so yeah you can get an idea of how to upgrade the end wheels so let's say that i have 10 steel ingots and one iron end wheel crafted so just place them in the end wheel like this and there it will give you a steel end wheel so that is how you upgrade the end wheels in this manner. All you need is the base end wheel, which is the iron end wheel or the lead end wheel, whatever you have available. So the meteorite end wheel can be upgraded in a similar way with 10 meteorite ingots. And the same goes for all the other end wheels. So for the star metal end wheel, yeah, 10 star metal ingots, you guys get the idea. So yeah, now let's take a look at something really interesting, which will give us flight capability. And those are wings. Yeah, you heard that right. HPM Smart now has wings. And the first wing that we are going to take a look at are the limp wings. Now, in order to craft the limp wings, you need a tier 2 end wheel. And that tier 2 end wheel will give you one set of limp wings. Now, the limp wings won't do much. But yeah, they will reduce or basically they will negate any sort of fall damage that you take. So, this is basically feather falling. But you instead have wings instead of boots. So let me switch my game mode to survival and as you can see i am going down even if i want to go down fast i can with these wings equipped yeah they won't let me fly but yeah they will negate any sort of fall damage whatsoever then comes the murky wings which are an upgrade of the limb wings with a tachyon capsule now in order to get a tachyon capsule you need muon and higgs boson in a linear particle accelerator now murky wings are really really interesting if I press space, bam, I can actually fly and look at this animation. It is awesome. So yeah, the murky wings will allow you to fly at really high speeds in the horizontal flight. And yeah, they will also negate fall damage like the limp wings did. And they have a really cool animation, by the way. So that was all for wings. Now let's take a look at the satellite laser designator. Now the satellite laser designator is crafted in this formation and what it does is it replaces the satellite coordinate designator which we previously used for some of our satellites. So the way the satellite or rather the laser designator works is very similar to how the laser designator works for missiles. You basically link it with any satellite which will use a specific coordinate and then you launch the satellite. So let me do that real quick. And there we go. So now that I have launched my orbital death ray and it is linked to the laser satellite designator, I can call in a death ray strike using just a single click. There we go. There. So yeah, that is all the laser satellite designator does it calls in or it basically does the same task as the coordinate designator does next up we have the tungsten breacher which is crafted using four tungsten bolts two insulators and one tungsten ingot and this is a pretty handy tool as it will basically allow you to be fireproof when you have any item that will burn you in your inventory so as you can see i have depleted uranium fuel in my inventory and it is burning me right now when i'm in survival but as soon as i take the reacher in my inventory all the fire is gone so the reacher is pretty useful in that manner it will also protect you even without the hazmat suit i have worn the hazmat suit so that i don't get radiation now next up is the cooling tower which is a still work in progress but it is cool nonetheless it is crafted using seven concrete blocks and once you have crafted it place it like this and bam you have the most stylish looking cooling tower ever and i am guessing that hbms is gonna add functionality to this cooling tower soon but for now this is just for sure but still it looks pretty good and yeah it can be used in your nuclear builds 
so yeah guys that was all i had for this video i hope you guys liked it if you did don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this peace out my guys stay safe